Welcome back to the shop and to the channel. We are finally getting down to making the actual replacement for this spline shaft, for this drive shaft that is severely worn and rounded over, over the majority of its length. So as a recap, this is the drive shaft out of my universal milling head for my Canty horizontal mill. And this driven gear slides down and seats onto the end of it. And there's also a bearing that sits on the nose of it. This sliding shaft here goes over top of that splined shaft and is keyed to it. And that allows the milling head to be moved away from the base of the machine. Just makes it a lot more flexible and usable. Started down this journey, the first thing I did was I made a 3D model of the drive shaft just to see if I had my measurements correct and also to see if it would actually fit into this mating gear. Seemed to go okay, so the next thing I did was get some Delrin and I machined a facsimile of the shaft out of Delrin and again. Everything seemed to go okay, and I think I had my procedures down good. And most recently, I machined this stubby version of the shaft, again, using the same techniques I learned from machining that piece of Delrin, and also took the opportunity to machine the boss at the end of the shaft where the bearing would sit. So at this point, I feel pretty comfortable that I'm going to take this remainder of the 1045 stock I have and chuck that up in the lathe and into the K&T and make this full length shaft for real this time. No more test pieces. We're going all in on this one. Not going to be a lot of narration and details explained in this video. Those have been gone over in the previous couple of videos so I'll put a link in the description for those so we're just going to do a lot more machining and I'll interject some comments here and there well I have the shaft chucked up in the four jaw chuck and dialed in um, I also have it dialed in here on the long end and sitting in steady rest I'm using the steady rest here so I can face off the far end of the shaft as well as drill a center. Well, with the center in place now, I want to mark the length of the shaft, how much I'm going to need to machine down to an inch and a quarter. This is not a precision length, plus or minus 30 thousandths would be fine. Checking my starting measurement here, the shaft is turned, polished, and ground, so it comes out at 1 inch 500 thousandths. I'm going to touch off and take off 10 thousandths so I can measure how much taper I may have in the shaft.
taking some time here to take measurements on the ends of the shaft as well as in the center to see what the shape of this thing is after taking the first pass. I know that this lathe has wear in the bed, so I expect that to show up in the shaft. And I have not adjusted the tailstock for taper in a long time, so chances are also pretty good that I'm going to need to make some adjustments there. Well, there's definitely a taper in the shaft, so I'm going to set up a dial indicator on the live center on the tailstock, and we'll adjust the tailstock until I get about half of the difference between the front from the left side of the shaft to the right side of the shaft is been taken out, and that should eliminate the taper. However, there is a bit of a bulge in the center of the shaft, and I I'm guessing that's probably because of tool pressure, and we'll just have to deal with that when I finish machining it. Uh, I'm probably going to need to spend some time with some emery paper to sand that bulge in the center out to get it at one and a quarter inches or a little bit under. <laughs> Well, there's still quite a bit of taper in the shaft, but I don't think it's anything I'm going to concern myself with. At this point, uh, I could be chasing this for a while. I think I'm just going to have to deal with it with, like I said, some emery paper. I'm going to have to deal with the center bulge anyway, so I might as well take care of any remaining taper at the same time. So at this point, I'm just going to go ahead and machine the shaft and take off what I need to to get me down to that 1 inch 250 thousandths target dimension. I'm not going to include in this video all the machining that took place to machine the shaft and even to its final part. I'll be just showing some clips here and there. But if you do like that kind of content, machining content with no talking and no music consider joining as a member of the youtube channel or consider becoming a patreon over on my patreon page both of those outlets have full-length videos where i leave in the majority of this machine work so if you like that kind of stuff consider supporting the channel in that way and either joining becoming a member here or joining over on patreon there's actually quite a few more perks if you join on the patreon side of things yeah. Well, I finished the machining and also took to some emery paper here and taking some measurements. We are just a thousandths or two below one inch, 250 thousandths 
um, all the way across the shaft so I think we're ready to take it out and move it over to the K&T. Well, before we go ahead and start cutting the shaft on the K&T, I do want to get the oil sump full. I've opted to get some Mobile, Mobile Met 426 cutting oil. This is a good general purpose cutting oil that is safe to use on all metals from steel to brass and aluminum. It is pretty expensive. This was about $180 for five gallons and spilling some of it on the floor isn't making it any cheaper. To enable the pump, I just slide this little sleeve down off of the shaft onto the top of the pump. That shaft is powered by the spindle. When I turn the machine on, the shaft on the left will start up, but the one on the right only spins when the spindle is engaged, which means in, in my scenario, the pump will only pump oil when I actually engage the spindle, which is exactly the way I want it. You can configure this the other way, but I want it to only pump when the spindle is engaged. To spend some time priming the pump, but now with the machine on and the spindle running, I've opened the valve on the top of the machine and now I've got a good steady stream of oil coming out of that pump. I can adjust it, I can make it come down a little bit faster. I wanna adjust this so it's just really a trickle on this gear and we should be good to go. Well, we have everything set up here on the KT. I have the shaft clamped into the chuck on the dividing head and then it's seated in the footstock. I've got the footstock and everything clamped down to the table. Um, I have my table set up to where, and the knee and everything set up to where I'm zeroed, what I'm calling my zero, which is that the cutter is in the exact center of the shaft and the bottom of the cutter is touching off just on the surface of the shaft so it's at this point i'll be making all of my adjustments for cutting each of the splines so my friend ron that used to work for kt sent me this calculator so we can determine the right feeds and speeds so i set the horsepower for my machine up here as three and then this tells me for medium hardness steels, I can remove 1.3 cubic inches per minute at its rated capacity. Here it says I should have an 80 to 120 surface speed, feet per minute, for medium hardness steel. So we'll flip it over. And there's a few different ways that we can look at this. Now, if we look at the bottom of this one, our width of our cutter is 250 thousandths. So I move the slide over until 250 thousandths lines up with what I want for my cubic inches per minute, which I said was 1.3. So I know my depth of cut is only going to be about 120 thousandths. So if I read up from there, it's suggesting that my feed rate could be around 32 inches per minute. And that seems kind of ridiculous. So I must be reading this wrong, but I'm going to look at this from a different perspective. So instead, let's take a look at the top row so i'm going to set the arrow underneath the four or rather the four underneath the arrow and then take a look at my surface speed my feet per minute and that was supposed to be between 80 and 120. 
So if I look at that 80 to 120, it looks like I should have an RPM of 70 to 110. If we look at this at a different way, we look at the middle row here. Uh, over the top of it has number of teeth and cutters. Well, there's 24 in this 4-inch cutter. If I line that up with, say, 100 RPM, and then I look at the bottom below the opening has feed per tooth, and I want between one and two thousandths feed per tooth. We go right in the middle or so. We're looking at about three and a half inches per minute. So on the machine, the closest I have for both of these is 98 RPM and three and a half inches per minute. And I think I can alter that as I start taking material away. Each subsequent cut or pass will be taking away less and less material. So I should be able to up the RPMs and the feed rate. Uh, and so it doesn't take six years to get this thing done. Because I do have uh, 24 passes to take across this shaft before it's completely machined of all the splines. Well, over here on the machine now, we've got the RPM set to 98 and our feeds to three and a half inches per minute. We can go ahead and dial in for our first cut. We'll move the saddle and the knee the appropriate distance and we'll get this going and we'll do some machining. It's just going to be a lot of repetitive back and forth rotating the shaft six times for each one of these passes, which means I have 24 passes up and back to make on the shaft before it's complete.
With those first 12 passes cut, I need to rotate the shaft now by 36 degrees, which is four turns of the dividing head. With those six passes done, now I need to go 36 degrees in the opposite direction, so I need to reverse this and turn it eight turns, which would give me 72 degrees. Well, before I take this thing off of the machine, now that I've gone and machined all of these splines, I do want to do a test fit. I'll clean it off here quickly with a rag and we'll slide that driven gear over the splines. And I think that's a really, really good fit. It uh, has a little bit less play than my test shaft did. So I think I did a little bit better in getting these machined within a tolerance. Well, next we can go ahead and loosen the chuck. We'll take it out of here and bring it over to the lathe and start machining the end of it. Well, we've got this piece uh, chucked up in the fore jaw and dialed in concentric. So we can go ahead and cut it off to length and then machine that bearing boss on the end. And that should wrap up this piece. This time I will remember to set the cutoff tool to be perpendicular to the spindle. I forgot to do that the last time and ended up breaking the only carbide insert I had for this cutoff tool. I've since received a couple more, so we'll get this set up correctly and start cutting this off in the finished machining.
Well, finally, after many, many months of working on this thing and trying to make sure I don't do anything that would screw it up, I'm finally finished with the machining of this drive shaft. I'm also very happy that I hit all of my critical dimensions, especially this one where the bearing rides on the end of the shaft. I got it to 787 thousandths and four or five tenths right on the nose, exactly where I needed to be. And that's going to be it for this video. Sorry about the oil droplets on the lens. I didn't catch that until editing. But if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think. And if you'd like to support the channel either by joining as a channel member or over on Patreon, I would really appreciate it. It certainly does help me to be able to come out in the shop and produce this kind of content. Well, that's it for now. I have a lot more to do on this universal head before I can even start to use it. This was just one of the major components that need to be fixed. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.